President Biden says he plans to visit devastated areas of North Carolina tomorrow. Vice President Kamala Harris spoke to emergency management officials in Washington just yesterday, while former President Donald Trump visited Georgia to see the damage firsthand. Yeah! <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. What's going on? Man, check it. I'm old enough to remember when Katrina came down in 2008 and leveled the city of New Orleans. And the president, Mr. Bush, got on a plane and flew over and took pictures. The media ate his ass up for two weeks for doing that. Uh, the president's going to lead this investigation. He certainly knows what he himself did or didn't do. Uh, what could he have done to have made sure that the results were not unacceptable? Yeah, again, that, that's getting into all the after-action analysis, Ed. We're going to remain focused on solving problems right now and supporting the work that's ongoing to help people in need. There are people in the region that are in continued need of assistance. There are major issues that we have to address. There are real challenges on the ground. We've got to remain focused on that and keep our resources focused on that. There's going to be a time to do a full assessment, and we will. Thank you for being here. Buck stops at the president's desk. The president said he's going to lead the investigation into what went wrong. He need to look only in the mirror. Thank you for your tremendous uh, uh, leadership. But we all agree that in many areas, the initial relief response to Hurricane Katrina was unacceptable at the local, state, and federal levels. That's why today the House and Senate are forming a bipartisan committee made up of senior members. This joint committee will be tasked with reviewing at all levels of government the immediate preparation and recovery from Hurricane Katrina. Now, Mr. Bush said that he didn't want to go down there and tie up the roads and take away resources from the city. So he decided to fly over, take pictures, call people on the phone and said, if you need anything, let me know. The media went in and ate his ass up for about three weeks. Now we have Hurricane Helene just happened and our leadership here, Mr. Biden is out here on the beach sunbathing. But I've been told that it would be disruptive if I did it right now. We will not do that at the risk of diverting or delaying any, any of the response assets needed to deal with this crisis. Now, when asked about that, he says that he made a phone call. On the hurricane, Mr. President, why weren't you and Vice President Harris here in Washington commanding this this weekend? I was commanding. I was on the phone for at least two hours yesterday and the day before as well. I command call a telephone Is it all my security people. He also got on a plane and flew over the state of North Carolina while he was going on vacation. Now we have the other one here, our first strong black woman VP. She's out here in San Francisco fundraising. Right now at 11, back in the Bay Area after her high-profile visit to the border. Tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris touched down at SFO, going straight to the city, where she'll be attending a fundraiser tomorrow in San Francisco, likely her last one in the Bay Area before the election. Vice President Kamala Harris is in Las Vegas tonight for a campaign event. It comes after a busy day in Los Angeles. The VP held a star-studded fundraiser in downtown L.A. Now she's doing a photo op in Savannah, Georgia, when it's nice and safe and she's pretending she's serving food, it's a photo op. The people have to come to her and get some sandwiches or whatever. Okay. Meanwhile, the people of North Carolina who needs the help, who needs FEMA, she says. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. And you can apply now for anyone who's watching this who has been affected. There are FEMA personnel who are going door-to-door door to, door to interact personally with folks, especially those who do not have 
electricity, but also um, that, that aid, if you have electricity, can be applied for online, and I encourage people to do that. FEMA will just basically verify your address, and then the process should take um, hold. $750 check to the people in North Carolina. If you could come gum down and come get it. Yes. Because there's no way for us to come and give it to you. You have to come down on the muddy roads, jump over some tree branches, come down the hill, way down here, and we'll give you the check. Day six. And I just can't help but to, I mean, I literally am just crying for my people. And for, I mean, like, how could, how could the government do us like this? And how could the whole country just forget about us? Like, it's not enough. What, what is being done is not enough. I mean, there are entire communities that have been just decimated. There is, I mean, where is our government? I mean, for Kamala, and I was, I am an, an avid supporter for her to stand in Florida today and make, I mean, make a statement where is our government where's the president where is that i mean these people are so hard working they have struggled and struggled and struggled for generation and generations to have what little bit they do and it is completely wiped out from under them and you can't do any more you can't send any more support or any help to you this is the same government, maybe a year ago, when Elon Musk was trying to get his Starlink across the urban areas and the FCC, they said no, they denied it. The Federal Communications Commission reaffirming a 2022 decision to deny Elon Musk's Starlink internet service nearly $900 million in rural broadband subsidies earlier this week. The two Republican commissioners on the five-member FCC dissenting from the decision. Senior Republican FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr writing this in his dissent. Quote, after Elon Musk acquired Twitter and used it to voice his own political and ideological views without filter, President Biden gave federal agencies a green light to go after him. Today, the FCC adds itself to the growing list of administrative agencies that are taking action against Elon Musk's businesses. So this is the time when Elon Musk was asking the government for $900 million to get this going. They said no, because they were mad at Elon for buying Twitter. Okay, so they said, no, we don't need your technology. We'll do it ourselves. So our government went out and spent, I think, $42 billion to get Wi-Fi in, a, in the rural areas, and it didn't work. So now they had to come back with their hat in their hand and ask Elon Musk, can you help us out with the Starlink? I've also directed the development of Starlink, deployment of Starlink satellites. Uh, 50, 50 are in place right now. More are going to be put in place so people in places like Canton can call for help and reach the ones that love loved ones who they're not sure of anybody other than that phone because of no cell service. And here they go, parading as if though this was their idea when Mr. Trump was the one that tapped Elon Musk on the shoulder and said, hey, we need your help. I spoke to Elon. I'm getting him. I want to, we want to get Starlink hooked up because they have no communication whatsoever. And Elon, Elon will always come through. And we know that. Now, while in Georgia, Trump was asked by a reporter, did you call Mr. Biden for FEMA relief efforts, and he says this. Have you reached out to President Biden about federal relief efforts? No, I haven't reached out to him. No, he, uh, I think he's sleeping right now. I... <laughs> Sleepy Joe. They also asked him, why you keep insulting Kamala's intelligence? Why do you need to do that? I insult her intelligence. Well, I, I have to do that. Well, I don't think she's a very bright person. I do feel that. I mean, I think that's right. I think I am a very bright person. And a lot of people say that. I don't think she's a very bright person. And you know what? Our country needs a very smart person. And I don't think she's a very smart person. But so I'm not looking that? to, I don't consider that an insult. That's just a fact. <laughs>
<laughs> Man, I love this guy. I love this guy. He speaks in plain English. No fluffy words. No words that's going over your head. He speaks common folk language. The peasant language. And this is why the reporters don't like him. He's not presidential. He don't use $5 words to explain something. Now let's go see how the unions, how the unions fare with Kamala. How many folks support Vice President Harris? Uh, any hands? Uh, no hands. Uh, wow. Okay. Nobody's business. It's nobody's business, says one man. So there you go. Uh, I tried, Maria, and uh, interesting. Fine. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Interesting. Well, nobody raised their hands. This is a union, guys. The Democrats love the unions. The unions love the Democrats. And here's an example here. None of them raised their hands for Kamala. She's a fraud. Man, oh, man. Anyway, we got less than 30 days, I believe. Guys, if you register to vote, if your state is a state that opens up early to vote, take your ass out there and vote early and bring a friend. Do not wait until the last week to vote. Do not wait on Tuesday. This election is going to be too big to rig, so we got to make our voice heard early. Soon as they open up to vote early, take your ass on, bring a friend, and vote Donald J. Trump. All right? Make a strong statement. Hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met.